So guys, after understanding what is vapor pressure lowering, in this video, we are going to understand what is boiling point elevation. Okay. Now to understand boiling point elevation, first we must understand what is boiling point. Now you might be thinking that you already know what is boiling point. But guys, up till now, we have only been told that boiling point is the temperature at which the liquid starts to evaporate. But guys, that is totally wrong and you must understand the real concept and how is the boiling point calculated. And to understand what is boiling point, you must also know what is vapor pressure. So in this video, first of all, we will quickly understand what is vapor pressure. Then we will understand what is boiling point. And after that, we will move on to boiling point elevation. Now, for those who have already seen my previous videos, and who already know what is vapor pressure, you guys can skip this video ahead. Okay. But rest of y'all watch this video from the start till the end to understand the complete concept. Let us consider a closed container over here. Okay. And in this closed container, I am going to take a volatile liquid. Now, why I have taken a volatile liquid? Because the top layer molecules of the volatile liquid evaporate even at room temperature. Okay. And as we all know that when liquid evaporates, it is going to form vapors. Okay. And guys, what you observe is that initially, initially the liquid gets quickly evaporated into vapors. Okay. Initially, it is going to get quickly evaporated and it is going to form vapors. So as can I say that initially the rate of evaporation is fast. Okay. Now guys, again, after some time, we make observations. And now what we observe is that the liquid is still getting evaporated and forming vapors. But this time, the liquid is forming vapors slowly, which means that the liquid is getting evaporated slowly. So guys, can I say that now the rate of evaporation is decreased and you observe one more thing. We observe that now the vapor molecules, the vapor molecules have also started turning back into liquid. And we all know that vapor molecules turning back into liquid is called as condensation. So guys, can I say that now the condensation is also started. Okay. So after some time, we make two observations. The first observation is that the rate of evaporation is decreased. And the second observation is that the condensation has also started. Now guys, again, after some time, we will reach a stage and at that particular stage there will be a dynamic equilibrium that is being established now what is the meaning of this dynamic equilibrium so what happens at dynamic equilibrium is that the amount of liquid tur turning into vapors is equals to the amount of vapors getting converted back into liquid. Let me repeat again. The amount of liquid getting converted into vapors will be equals to the amount of vapors getting converted back into liquid, which means that if 10 moles of liquid gets converted into vapors, then the same amount that is nothing but 10 moles of vapor will also get converted back into liquid. So this is what happens at a dynamic equilibrium. So as can I say that at dynamic equilibrium, the rate of evaporation will become equals to the rate of condensation. Why? Because, because rate of evaporation tells us how quickly the liquid gets converted into vapor. And the rate of condensation tells us how quickly the Vapors get converted into liquid and both are happening at same rate. Therefore, they are equal. Clear with this? Now, at this equilibrium, can you see still there are vapors that are being present? 
these vapors will apply pressure on the liquid okay these vapors that are present will apply pressure on the liquid and the pressure applied by these vapors is called as vapor pressure clear with this so if we have to define vapor pressure what will be the definition the pressure exerted by the vapors which vapors see these vapors that are present on the liquid at dynamic equilibrium this is the most important point at dynamic equilibrium is called as vapor pressure and guys we represent this vapor pressure as p not okay please make note of this otherwise you will get confused afterwards okay so make note of this that we represent vapor pressure as p not now guys my one simple question to you all how can we change the vapor pressure so vapor pressure can be changed by simply changing the temperature which means that if you increase the temperature the vapor pressure will also increase and if you decrease the temperature then the vapor pressure will also decrease now guys let us understand what is boiling point okay so boiling point is nothing but the temperature it is the temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to the surrounding pressure okay let me repeat again it is the temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to the surrounding pressure let's understand this with the help of an example so for that let us consider an example of boiling point of water now let us assume that the surrounding temperature is one atmospheric pressure that is nothing but equals to the daily life pressure that we experience now guys at 25 degrees celsius that is nothing but at room temperature the vapor pressure of water is 0.0313 atmospheric pressure so guys can i say that this vapor pressure is less as compared to the surrounding pressure so guys now here i have to increase this vapor pressure so that the vapor pressure becomes equal to the surrounding pressure and how i can increase the vapor pressure by increasing the temperature okay so now i increase the temperature from 25 degree celsius to 50 degree celsius and now guys at 50 degree celsius the vapor pressure now increases to 0.1217 atmospheric pressure now also if you observe guys the vapor pressure is still less than the surrounding pressure okay so again i have to increase this vapor pressure and to increase the vapor pressure i increase the temperature okay so now at 75 degree celsius the vapor pressure becomes 0.3806 atmospheric pressure still it is less than the surrounding pressure and finally at 100 degree celsius the vapor pressure becomes one atmospheric pressure which is nothing but equal to the surrounding pressure and this is how a boiling point of water is decided okay so what is boiling point of water it is nothing but the temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to the surrounding pressure so as you can see over here the vapor pressure and surrounding pressure are equal at 100 degree celsius therefore we usually say that the boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius but it is necessary to mention boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius at one atmospheric pressure okay so boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius at one atmospheric pressure now my one question to you all what if we make the surrounding pressure to be two atmospheric pressure so will the boiling point of water increase or it will decrease or will it remain same that you have to comment in the comment section below okay and i will tell you all whether it is right or wrong okay and you will find the answer in the description box as well okay 
Now moving on guys, let us now understand a concept of boiling point elevation. So for that, as you can see in the left side container, I have pure water and in the right side container, I am having solution of water. Okay. Now what is this solution of water? See, as you can see over here in pure water, I have added non-volatile solute. Can you see this green color non-volatile solute? I have added green color non-volatile solute to it. Now what is the meaning of non-volatile solute? See, the non-volatile solute is not going to form vapors. Okay, so it is not going to help, help in vapor pressure. Non-volatile solute is not going to help in vapor pressure. Clear with this? Now, According to the concept of vapor pressure lowering that we have studied in the last video, what we know is that vapor pressure of pure water, see this vapor pressure of pure water which, which we represent by P0 is greater than the vapor pressure of solution of water in which a non-volatile solute is added. Okay, so this is what we have studied already in the previous video. Now, if you do not know what is vapor pressure lowering, then don't worry guys, I've already uploaded a separate video on it. You can find the link of that video in the description box below or you can simply click on this I button which is present on the right top corner of your screen. Okay, so now guys, can I say that here the vapor pressure of pure water is greater and the vapor pressure of solution of water is less okay therefore at 100 degree celsius at 100 degree celsius guys the vapor pressure of pure water will be one atmospheric pressure that we have seen just now but over here the vapor pressure is less therefore at 100 degree celsius the vapor pressure will be less than one atmospheric pressure let me repeat again if you have not understood see over here the vapor pressure is proper but here the vapor pressure is less am i right so at 100 degrees celsius the vapor pressure of pure water will be one atmospheric pressure but since here the vapor pressure is less Therefore, at 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure over here will be less than one atmospheric pressure. Now, if the vapor pressure is less and if I want to make it one atmospheric pressure, how can I increase the vapor pressure? By obviously increasing the temperature. So now I increase the temperature, increase the temperature and after a stage, I, ma I make the vapor pressure equals to one atmospheric pressure. But guys, what you have done over here, to make it one atmospheric pressure, you have increased the temperature. So guys, can I say over here, the boiling point temperature of solution of water will be greater than the boiling point temperature of pure water. And why it is so? Because here you need to supply heat and in order to form vapors okay because here the vapor pressure is less and in order to make the vapor pressure greater you are supplying heat and how you are supplying heat by increasing the temperature am i right so guys i hope that you have understood this concept and this concept is nothing but your boiling point elevation so if you add a non-volatile solute to a solvent then its boiling point is going to increase here we have considered an example of water but the same applies to other liquids as well clear with this now moving on as you can see over here i am having a graph now in this graph see this on this y axis i am having vapor pressure and on the x axis i am having temperature now this 760 mm is nothing but equals to one atmospheric 
प्रेशर ओके सेवन सिक्सटी एम एम इज इक्वल टू वन एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर सो एट वन एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेशर एज यू कैन सी ओवर इयर सी दिस टी बी नॉट टी बी नॉट इज लेस देन टी बी दिस इज वॉट आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यूर अर्लियर टी बी नॉट इज लेस देन टी बी सी एज यू कैन सी ओवर इयर द टी बी वैल्यू इज ग्रेटर ओके देन टी बी नॉट सो गाइज आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस ग्राफ एज वेल दिस इज सिंपल वन नथिंग uh complicated in this okay now here this solvent is nothing but pure water which we have taken see this pure water is nothing but acting as our solvent am i right it is acting as a solvent okay because it is dissolving this green color solute in it therefore it is acting as a solvent as simple as that now moving on guys what will be the value of boiling point elevation obviously the value of boiling point elevation is nothing but equals to tb minus tb not since tb is greater therefore we subtract tb not from tb okay and this is the value of boiling point elevation now guys moving on let us understand the relation between boiling point elevation and concentration of solute so guys what we observe is that the boiling point elevation which is represented by delta tb is directly proportional to molality okay so see this boiling point elevation is nothing but delta db and this concentration of solute is nothing but molality okay i have expressed the concentration of solute in molality now what is molality in molality molality tells us how much amount how much number of moles of solute are present in 1 kg of solution okay so molality tells us how much moles of solute are present in 1 kg solution okay now we are if you want to remove this proportionality sign and replace it with a equal to sign we have to add a constant and as you can see over here we have added a constant kb now this kb is called as your boiling point elevation constant it is also called as molar elevation constant or it is also called as ebullioscopic constant okay so this this has three different names now i want to find out the units of this kb so how i can find out the units of this kb by using this formula so kb is nothing but equals to delta tb upon m now this delta tb is nothing but tem uh, difference in the temperature that we have already seen boiling point elevation okay this t is nothing but temperature only so the units will be kelvin okay whereas this m is nothing but molality the and the units of molality is nothing but moles per kg clear with this now finally can i say that the units will be k is nothing but kelvins into kg this uh, is going to go in the numerator and mole inverse because it is in the denominator now many of you might be wondering that why we have considered concentration of solute in terms of molality and why we have not considered molarity over here because guys molarity changes with temperature but here we don't want a factor that is that changes with temperature and as we all know that molarity does not change with temperature therefore we have considered molarity over here okay So guys I hope that you have liked this video and if you like this video then please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and go check out my channel where I uploaded physics and chemistry videos they might be helpful for you and just thank you for watching this video